All right guys, today we're talking about Adobe Aero and how you can utilize Photoshop to provide two different experiences. Okay, so let's get started by talking about what exactly Adobe Aero is. Now Adobe Aero is a tool for Apple devices in which that you're able to utilize an application uh, to build an augmented reality experience. Now they have some great examples on the website here and, let, and let's just quickly have a look at one of them and I'm just going to turn my sound off so it doesn't uh, particularly get in the way. Now a lot of this is uh, digitally done After Effects and um, some of it is then the actual application in motion. So we can see here in this example that they're bringing the elements out from the painting. Now to do something like this in their demonstration video that they have where you're bringing the elements out, if we, if we just pause here, it is required to firstly physically paint that painting and then secondly to have an, a digital form of it as well. That if we take today's example, you need to have a Photoshop file that all those uh, different elements are painted in uh, individual layers. So that is the, the crux of uh, Photoshop with Adobe Aero. Now Adobe Aero does allow for you to create some truly transforming, some amazing pieces, but it ultimately comes down to your level of skill to create content. Now like this may look impressive, but it comes down to how well you can create this in things like Photoshop or through 3D modeling, that that is where the real challenge comes into play. So. To start off with, Adobe Aero, at its longest, shortest form, it is an application that allows a user to create and share their augmented reality experiences. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, well, if Adobe Aero is all about augmented reality, well, how does Photoshop particularly fit in with that? And honestly, it's a great question to ask. With Photoshop files, what we're able to do is we're able to bring a Photoshop file in, in different layers. That is, these top level layers that we have in our file here, they can come through as individual layers or individual elements from an Adobe Aero perspective. So it allows us to uh, utilize an option in Adobe Aero where we can layer them at different lengths. That is like from a uh, backwards to forwards perspective, we're able to bring them backwards and forwards as much as we want in an equal amount between each element. But what it also means is that all the elements are grouped together and are fixed together. So we can't move, say, if we wanted to take this flower here and we just wanted to move it all the way to the right. We're not able to easily do that in Adobe Aero when we're utilizing one Photoshop file. So what we're going to go through today is we're going to utilize this file here, which is our original uh, design file. And we're also going to use this secondary file, which looks slightly duller. And that's just because we've removed some uh, lighting adjustments off the file. But these are going to be grouped together in their individual aspects. That is, uh, for example, we have the right vine that we can turn on and off. Uh, we have the left vine that we can turn on and off. We have the main text in the middle that we can turn off and on. And what we're going to do is we're going to see a comparison of what it looks like when you're creating your experience from a Photoshop file versus what you can do with individual elements in Adobe Aero. So to get started, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, utilize firstly on the original file here uh, in the uh, options for saving, there's a file and then you can export. And within these export options here, which we were able to see, unfortunately I've accidentally got the rest cut off, uh, but we can utilize this export for error option. And this is what we're gonna be doing. So what it does by you doing that is it groups all these individual layers into the uh, different aspects. And what we're gonna use here is the preserve layers section. So basically the flattened version is, it's saving as a JPEG, whereas preserve layers is gonna allow us to adjust the uh, backwards, forwards, left, right between each layer. So we're going to hit export on that. We're going to save that in our creative cloud uh, file, which I've already done. So I'm going to not save it this time. And then from the other side with my elements that are grouped together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all of these off and I'm basically just going to export uh, each of these top level layers 
as individual PNG files so that we can bring them in and we can construct the scene ourselves in Adobe Aero. I'm going to do this off camera. I don't want you guys to have to sit through the uh, me having to go through each individual file trying to export them. So I'll come back to you guys in Adobe Aero. Okay, now that we've got the files ready to go, first off, we're going to start with an Adobe, just standard Photoshop file import and show you what that looks like. So to start with, we're going to hit create new in the bottom left there. We need to find our surface. Now we're in a studio here. Uh, so mind all the tape on the ground. What we're going to do from here is we're going to hit plus and we're going to go to creative cloud and we have no internet connection. Great. And with the magic of editing, we now have internet connection. Perfect. So we have our flyer here, the Spring Flyer RGB PSD. So we're clicking on that, we're hitting open, and that's going to take a moment to load. So we're going to click to place it down on the ground. We can see here a little wheel to say it's uh, currently downloading the file, where it's up to with that download, and sort of roughly how far it's going or how fast it's going. Now we can see that we've placed it down on the ground here. What we're going to get here eventually is our flyer load in. And what it's doing is it's downloading the file, file originally, it's now converting it so it can be utilized in Adobe Aero. And then in a moment, we'll see it pop up into the scene. So we can see that it's now loading to the scene. And we have this very small flyer on the ground. So I'm just gonna pinch zoom this to increase the size. And you know, that's that'll do roughly. So with this file, what we can do, given that it's a Photoshop file with layers on it, what we can do is we can use the layer option within uh, Adobe Aero here. So down the bottom here, we have this layers and what we can do with layers is just move things around. So you can move it on the X axis, uh, whoops, the Y to go up and down and also the Z. And I think the Z personally for me is the most exciting one in that we can then walk through the elements. So we have this balloon here and we can go through it and we've got this, I don't even know what that is, but we can walk through it. And we've got the, the main heading here that we can go through and, and see the grass behind, although we are too close to the wall, so it doesn't quite know what to do. Uh, and that is one challenge with Aero just in general, is that if you get too close to a wall, it kind of loses a bit of the tracking. But yeah, we can see, we can go through the items, and in fact, we can go through to the other side of the entire poster itself. But it does allow for some pretty cool, uh, cool effects. Uh, with this though, I guess you're very limited in regards to what particularly each element can do. So if for some reason we wanted this balloon to be going left and right when we're playing to, a, to an end user, unfortunately there isn't a simple way to do that. Now normally you'd use behaviors, so we're just going to do a start behavior and we're going to make the action, uh, we want it to move, let's just say. And so let's say the X offset, we want it to move 140 centimeters. And actually that looks uh, quite comical. So let's just reduce that down. So even that looks a fair bit. Let's, uh, let's, do, uh, let's just do a little bit like five centimeters. And so if we hit preview mode now, when we start our application, it will then move across. And so you can see that the entire piece is moving. And, and that is truly the challenge with a Photoshop file in that you can't unfortunately move each individual aspect. Uh, that would be ideal if we could do that or even if we could uh, particularly move the layers. As far as I understand, none of these options particularly allow for manipulating the layers based um, items. So this is uh, a great example of how to get Photoshop files into Aero. But it also gives you uh, a clear picture as to the challenges with a Photoshop file in Aero. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take um, our individual elements that we've exported out. We're going to bring them into a scene and we're going to put them all into place ourselves manually. Okay, we're now going to put in all the elements in individually. So this is gonna take some time. We go, we've got all our pieces, sorry, in Creative Cloud. If we go into the Creative Cloud section here, we've got this elements folder, and this is all the individual elements that we just saw. So we could bring in, say, the logo. We could hit open, place it down, so it's ready to go onto the ground. And basically, what we're gonna be doing is bringing each of those individual aspects in, and then trying to visually lay it out as best as we can uh, to our 
to the best of our abilities and we're also going to think scale things and the like so i'm going to do this um i'm not going to talk whilst doing this because it's going to take some time and i'm just going to quickly fast lapse through this all right i'll be back in a second guys Okay, so before I continue, we can see all our individual elements are in here and they're all off the ground slightly. Now, this is just all the raw elements in here. They're obviously not positioned or sized correctly. So that is our next task. So I'm gonna now be doing some amazing pinch zooming and hoping for the best for a lot of the cases. So wish me luck. All right, guys, it is very rough and ready, but we have our elements in here. And so if we walk a little bit closer, we can see like elements are overlapping and, and that's pretty cool. We've got our elements that are sticking out from the poster itself. And honestly, whilst it's a little time consuming to put all the elements in, it's actually not that bad. And obviously side on, these are all just 2D objects that are in here, although we can read everything from behind <laughs> if we wanted to. But honestly, what we are able to do then is get some cool individual element uh, animations. So let's just use the balloon as a as a reference point. So let's, uh, let's make it that when the animation starts, we want it to move up in, uh, in the area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the balloon like down low in the, in the piece and we're gonna make it move up on start. So we're gonna add like a trigger where on start, we wanna have that this moves and we wanna move it up about 75 centimeters is what it roughly was. And let's give that over like a six second, yeah, about six seconds. So let's, let's just run that. And if we hit preview here, we can then see the balloon pop up, although that, that went, <laughs> that went way too high. I'm not quite sure what I did wrong there. Um, was that not correct? It's negative 73 centimeters at the moment and where's zero? Hello? How is that wrong? <laughs> well, I did something wrong there, but you get the, the idea there that basically we can add this behavior and actually I wanna, <laughs> I wanna change this one. We wanted, uh, uh, no, yeah, the Y offset. That should just be increasing by, uh, all right, whatever, let's just do like five centimeters and see what happens. Um, also, the ease in, ease out kind of felt weird. <laughs> let's make it ease in. And actually, I can just preview that, right? Yeah, then we can just hit play here and see what occurs. Yeah, see, now that's going a tiny amount. So let's change this to like 50, even though we know that that's not gonna be enough. If we hit preview here. I swear sometimes hitting preview on this screen is almost impossible. Let's just hit preview mode here and see where that moves up to. All right, that is... <laughs> it's going, it's going. All right, well, it's it's definitely working somewhat. We're just getting the measurements wrong. So you see, you get the idea though. Like we can make basic elements move around a little bit. So let's just say we wanted um, also this vine to like slightly move. So on start, we, uh, let's let's make it that on start it uh, does a bit of rotation where it's going to where it's going to what do we want it to do your maybe and that might be in, might be too much no your was the wrong one. <laughs> no wait we need that to be zero that's zero let's just double check which one is which again. I swear, I swear I click and play sometimes. All right, that is also not what I wanted to. <laughs> it's the last one. Out of all of them, it's the last one. So let's say we want it to roll like 15 and we'll just make it an infinite. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. We'll just make it infinite. We'll make the delay like four seconds. Uh, we'll make it back and forth as well. The duration, let's say like 
seven seconds and we'll make it 15 again. So if we hit play, if we hit preview now, we should see with the, after a little bit of delay, we see a slight movement and obviously that 15 degrees possibly was a bit too much. Uh, let me actually remove that slight duration, uh, the slight delay on it. But you understand now, like we're able to now individually animate these items because we have them all as these separate elements. And then it honestly just comes down to your ability to provide the best sort of um, the best sort of visual for the for what you're providing. So we can see it slowly move backwards and forwards. And so you could do this to all the elements within the area. Uh, so like say the birds here, we could have them flying across the screen. And although whilst we couldn't really infinitely do that one you could um, at least allow it to fly across the screen partly to the other side of uh, the flyer, as an example. And perhaps a good effect would be for these flowers to grow. So if we shrink these flowers down and then on behaviors, and let's just make them that on start, we want to uh, increase the scale. And I have no idea by how much I need, but even that's not enough. Actually, it is enough. They just need to, they need to be uh, moved forward a bit. So let's just say that. So if we hit preview, can we see those flowers now? No, we can't. <laughs> this is the hardest part. And honestly, I want to leave this all in so that you guys can see how difficult getting the animations right is. Because it's not <laughs> super easy sometimes to to do this. So let's keep moving these flowers forward. And if we hit preview then, can we see? And so you see there's a clipping issue now. So we're still not far enough forward where these flowers are growing through. And honestly, this is what it's like. It's trial and error of trying to get the elements right and animated correctly. And you could do it mathematically. I'm doing this very much on the fly so we can get an example out but you could do this mathematically you could figure it all out we can still see our vine slowly moving on the side and it just allows for a little bit of a touch uh, to provide a better experience now a flyer isn't particularly the best example here um, but it is something that then you can interact with and go through and walk through there is still the issue with adobe arrow of its app only it requires Adobe Arrow to be downloaded to get all the animations in. So there are definitely still real challenges with this. But this gives a real high level view of what exactly you could do with Adobe Arrow. And so that's it guys, we've gone through, we've created our different experiences. Guys, there are so many different options out there. If you have any thoughts about today's video, or if you have any future video ideas, please drop them down in the comments. We'd be more than happy to explore. Until next time, guys, have a great day. I'll see you next time. Peace.